goodness, 111 in Little Rock. It feels like 107 in Houston and 106 in Oklahoma City. So folks, these heat index values are in the danger category. It's even 106 for you there in Birmingham. Make sure you take plenty of breaks. Make sure you reduce your level of activity, especially during the extreme heat of the day. Drink plenty of fluids, preferably water. These are just common sense kind of things, but you do need to keep them in mind if you have to be out and about. Boy, this heat is really causing a lot of problems in the Lone Star State. Dan Atkinson has the story. There's no doubt about it. It's hot. Texas is locked into a perilous heat wave that is reaching historical proportions. Today is the 25th day, in fact, that Dallas-Fort Worth has reached 100 degrees or higher, which ties it for the second longest stretch on record of 100 degree or higher temperatures, which was set back in August of 1952. The heat and drought conditions have dried up crops, causing more than one and a half billion dollars in agriculture damages. Residents, of course, are also suffering as they look for ways to beat the heat. Many are being forced to let their air conditioners work overtime and worry about the bills later. Consequently, electric bills are higher than they were this time last year. And the bills have tripled in a lot of cases, some have doubled. So we have different uh, pay agreements for, with our folks that uh, they could call us and we can work with each individual case. A spokesman for TU Electric says electricity will not be cut off to customers having difficulty paying their bills during the heat wave. They recommend calling the company to warn them of any payment problem. The company also recommends keeping thermostats set at 78 degrees for maximum efficiency. I'm Dan Atkinson for the Weather Channel. Well, we do have some cooler air in places like the Northeast and the Great Lakes. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like this cooler regime is going to make it as far south as Texas. We do have uh, 85 degrees right now in New York City and Philadelphia, 90. Trough is going to be moving through, and as it does so, we're going to see some scattered showers. We're also going to see... Thanks for joining us for Stormwatch. Coming up shortly, we'll have a look at thunderstorms with very heavy rains, especially near Denver. For now, though, on our tropical update, here's the latest in the tropics with Dr. Steve Lyons. Well, thanks, Rich. Tropical update time, and we've got some interesting weather out there. The tropics are heating up as we expect this time of year. We've been looking, of course, at this tropical storm here in the Pacific I'll show you in a minute. That one is very intense and is likely to become a hurricane shortly. We have some disturbed weather in the Northwest Caribbean, and I'll talk about that as well. And of course, we've got our tropical storm out here in the Eastern Atlantic, and it's moving to the west, uh, to the west-northwest. And let's get the latest statistics on that. Here it is, Tropical Storm Alex, 15.2 north. This is at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 46.9 west. And that's about 880 miles to the east of the Lesser Antilles, which are right over in here. So here, here you can see it here, the track. It's been he heading just west just north of west and currently the direction is still to the west but the latest information we have satellite wise is indicating it's starting to take a little more of a northwest turn we'll see if that's just a wobble or really a good sign for the islands out here here's the latest satellite imagery here it's just about dark out there so we're looking at an infrared image this is a big area of deep thunderstorms here and the circulation center is on the southwest side of this so there's still some shear out of the south, in other words, some upper level winds that are coming out of the south that are a little less favorable for it. That's keeping it in check. It's still trying to intensify very, very slowly, and that's a forecast in the Hurricane Center. We expect it to track to the west-northwest, and then just up, generally just north of the islands, but don't take your guard down yet, islands, because it's still south of you, and it could, in fact, continue to move a little more west and, and uh, then you could be in trouble later on. Now here's out farther to the uh, to the east off the African coast. We've had a very good tropical wave. It's actually a surface low pressure center. You see that there's not much thunderstorms with it but it's a very large circulation and the center is about right in there. 
And we'll have to watch this very closely as it moves to the west. It should have a fairly long life cycle to it as it pushes off at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Now, upper level wind-wise, here's our storm system here. This, these winds were drawn a little bit earlier today, and this upper level anti-cyclone right here, high pressure, is moving along with it just slowly. We have a trough of low pressure just to the west of it. This low pressure up here is dropping to the southwest. And as a consequence, we expect this to come to the west, northwest, and then a little more northwest as it goes to the north of this low as it comes down. Now, farther off into the Caribbean here, we see another low pressure center, and that's what's related to this thunderstorm area right here. We see what we call a difluent flow, where the flow is going one direction and then the other. And that's conducive for upward vertical motion or rising motion and the formation of thunderstorms. And that's what we've got over there. And we can see that here in the uh, infrared satellite imagery over the Caribbean. See a very large area of thunderstorms. Luckily, most of it's off the coast and not producing any flooding right now. But this system should continue to push off to the northwest the next uh, 24 hours. So you may get some pretty good rain out over the Yucatan in the next 24 hours. So stand by on that one. Now, this time of year, uh, this is our... August uh, storm track origins here, so we're just getting almost there to August, and you can see really we have origins over the entire tropical basin this time of year, and this is the time where we really get a ramp up. Now in the uh, Pacific, we've been looking at tropical storm Estelle, 70, pile, 70 mile per hour winds, which is just sub-hurricane. We probably will see this as a hurricane in the next hurricane advisory at uh, 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. This was at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. It's moving to the west at about 13 miles per hour. We expect that to continue to do that the next 24 hours. So it's moving away from land, but it should kick up some pretty good surf along the coast as we go through. And here's a picture of it as we move out there. You can see it's really picking up in intensity and a lot of deep thunderstorm activity. Farther out, we have Tropical Storm Darby. Wind's still 40 miles per hour, but it's moving off just north of Hawaii. And if we look at that on the uh, infrared satellite imagery, it's really just a low cloud swirl. There's no deep thunderstorms left with it at all. Well, let's get back to Rich and see what uh, deep thunderstorm activity is going on across the country now. All right. Thank you, Steve. As we look out across the country, a couple things going on. Still some very heavy thunderstorms across parts of the country, moving through parts of Tennessee, also near the Baltimore area, now crossing Chesapeake Bay uh, into parts of eastern Maryland and eventually Delaware. In fact, there's a tornado warning out for Kent County and Queen Anne's County in eastern Maryland. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's first talk about the tropics, though. We have a lot going on, both in the Atlantic and in the East Pacific. First things first, this is the big picture, and it shows a couple of the systems we're monitoring very closely. We have, of course, Tropical Storm Alex out here in the Atlantic. We also have Tropical Storm, almost Hurricane Estelle in the Eastern Pacific. And we have a big cluster of thunderstorms here just off of Nicaragua, which we'll mention in just a moment. But first things first, let's get to Alex. All eyes on Alex here as of the 11 p.m. advisory, 15.8 north, 47.6 west, or about 900 miles east of the Leeward Islands. Maximum sustained winds are at 50 miles an hour, and the system is moving west-northwest at 13 miles an hour. That is a, a gradual slowing over what we've seen the last couple of days. At one point, it was moving at 20 to 24 miles an hour. Now it has slowed down. But it's also taken more of a northwest turn, which is good news for the Leeward Islands. On the satellite vantage point, here are the Leeward Islands. This is Barbados, right where I'm pointing here. And then, of course, the islands extending all the way up in a big arc off to the northwest. And there, obviously, is Alex. The actual center of circulation, probably about where I have my finger here on the southwest side of where all this thunderstorm or convection action is. There is a little bit of southwesterly wind shear here in the atmosphere, which is pulling perhaps a little bit of the clouds off toward the northeast. But we also think that this system is actually building its own upper level high pressure area, which these systems are wont to do at times. And that is actually helping the outflow with it, which may have help it to slowly strengthen. It's a very complicated upper level wind pattern that Alex is interacting with. So the forecast is uh, a little bit tricky on this one. However, we do think on its present course, it should stay to the northeast of the Leeward Islands. Keep checking back with us for the latest information, but that is some good news at this point. But also, it could strengthen into a hurricane in the next two days as well. 
All right, as we head a little bit closer to the African coast, another very well-developed swirl in the atmosphere has come off the African coast, moving south of the Cape Verde Islands. The good news here is we don't really have very much in the way of any thunderstorm action with it. Some well to the south with the actual center of circulation probably about right there where I have my finger on the last frame. So there is a very well-developed low-level circulation, but again, no thunderstorms, no development at this point. We'll have to watch that one very closely as it follows Alex across the Atlantic. There is Alex, and you can see our upper-level wind flow on the east side of a little bit of a trough here is giving a little bit of wind shear, but not a lot of dramatic wind shear to the system right now. But it may also be helping to turn it perhaps a little bit more toward the west-northwest. We've been watching this area of thunderstorms off the Central American coast in the Western Caribbean pretty much all day. Looked very impressive earlier in the day, but it really just is a huge cluster of convection of thunderstorms. We were not able to find any evidence of a low-level circulation uh, here with ship reports or land-based observations, uh, and it does appear to be dying down slowly. If it continues to persist here, then perhaps eventually something may develop underneath it. But right now, such is not the case. We're hopeful, actually, that we could get some of this moisture moving up into the Gulf, not as a storm or a hurricane, but just as some tropical moisture to get into Texas. That doesn't appear real likely right now, but stay tuned. We'll keep you updated. As far as early August, obviously, we start to look all the way over to the African coast, the so-called Cape Verde season, and the system's obviously taking the uh, traditional pass through the Caribbean into the Gulf or perhaps even up along the east coast or hopefully recurving. Tropical storm Estelle, very close to becoming a hurricane in the Pacific. Maximum sustained winds just below hurricane force at 70 miles an hour. Moving to the west, maybe just a smidge to the northwest uh, at 9 miles an hour. Centered at 15 north, 105.9 west. Still a very well-developed tropical storm. It's getting a very well-developed central dense overcast. A lot of convection is kind of congealed now around where we think the uh, center of circulation is. The good news here is it is moving away from the Mexican coast. So it looks like uh, only shipping and just about falling apart completely. It's very hard to pick out here. The swirl is actually about right in here. And the swirl may actually move its way westbound and clip the Hawaiian Islands with some low clouds or even showers. But uh, uh, as far as hurricane or tropical storm force winds, that is not going to happen. Back in the States, though, we have... <laughs> a short person. Do you think you're short? Well, a little maybe, but you know, in some of my